Well, we're back. Uh, we're going to start with the smaller burns. We usually do a um, number of things going. Andrew Harris, obviously. Now, Elysium Lindy is owned by, uh, I guess, a former client of ours. He doesn't have any horses with us anymore. So I don't know why I keep mentioning Elysium Lindy. Paul uh, has been a great client of ours. He moved um, Wiggle Delight down to Andrew Harris. Andrew's had great luck with Elysium Lindy. He's undefeated with him, three for three. There's a horse that just did not race well for us up here. Um, you know, and, and as I said to somebody the other day, you know, not everybody gets along with every horse and everybody has their limitations. So there's going to be some horses that do better outside of the stable. There's going to be some that do better inside the stable. I'm certainly not begrudging Andrew Harris. Andrew Harris is a, a world-class trainer. He's done a fantastic job. And when it comes to cruising in style and Elysium Lindy, he's definitely done very well. So congratulations to Andrew with, uh, and Paul with Elysium Lindy. Hopefully they do well with Wiggle Delight and, um, and uh, hopefully they, they continue some luck. He had a little bit of a speed bump with cruising in style. I guess he had uh, had some bruising on his palate last week. Uh, we gave him a week off. You got to be very careful with that, especially horses that are a little headstrong. Any bruising on their palate, stop with them until the bruising's gone. A horse that doesn't pull, you can get away with it. It's okay. But when they're constantly wanting to get at it and tucking their head, you're prone to, to issues with this. And this isn't the first time cruising's had a bruised palate. So uh, we know likely where it came from, and, and obviously we can combat it. Uh, quite easily. So Andrew Harris doing very well overall with Cruising in Style and Elysium Lindy and hopefully success in the future with both of them. John Boot and Shane is Spirit of Dio. Many of you guys, especially our clients, just saw the video of Spirit of Dio making your first training trip the other day. Uh, John was very, very happy with her. Said he went a mile 47 last half in 18 or something, I believe. Said she was very good. I spoke to him for a minute on the phone. He was very happy with her. Angie Coleman was happy with Olympic Hopeful. Also, you saw a video of her going her first training mile of 2020. Uh, that was sent out last week. Um, uh, Blair. <laughs> thank you. I didn't talk to Blair when I was gone. I apologize. But um, Blair has mentioned that he's going to continue to push forward with Heavenly Skies. <laughs> I keep looking at the qualifying sheet saying, who am I missing here? Ah, it's Heavenly Skies. So hopefully Heavenly Skies is into qualifier in the field, one or the other. Limbo, it's been long enough in limbo. So Heavenly Skies hopefully will be qualifying soon. Irv Miller, and yes, he's the horse right now, isn't he? He's the man. Uh, yes, his head, an incredible run in New York. Four wins and a third in his last five. Was actually seven to five second, very close to being the favorite. Seven to five second favorite in the open at Yonkers Trot. So the most expensive open in North America is in Yonkers. We were the almost the favorite. We were the favorite for a little while, but ended up third for coming from off the pace. Versatile, obviously showed his versatility. This horse has won on the front, has raced well from behind. Just been an absolute breath of fresh air. And I, I have to say it, when you ask me the best horse we've ever had, yes doesn't pop into my head, but he should, shouldn't he? I don't know that we've had a better horse. Yeah, I like Lawmaker. He raced in the Hamiltonian Eliminations, but we didn't get to see him as a four-year-old, right? White Tiger kind of flounders as a three-year-old, and he's got a long way to go to catch up to Yes. Yes is just an incredible animal right now. Very impressed with him, impressed with the way that Herb has managed him, and just, I guess, probably the best horse we've ever had. Yes is just a, a really, really nice horse. Uh, Oso Pine, Carmen Osiello has him. He got screwed up last week. He ended up getting parked to the half. I was very frustrated over the whole race, but... Oh, so Pine showed he was durable, beat two lengths. He's in to go tonight, and I hope he does very well. Um, really, Blue Chip and Arctic Force both trained in 39, I assume together. It's highly unlikely he went in 39 exactly with both of them. Said they both trained very, very well, uh, Doug Brown. And here's a guy, Doug, and I said this last time, taking pictures, you know, making videos. So for the people out there that say they can't, you know, and, and take nothing away from Doug, but Doug is not a, a young man, right? You don't see Doug Brown on Twitter and Facebook all the time. He's not a very technical, savvy person. Neither am I. But for him to take the time and understand what it takes to be a part of the stable and how hard we work at informing our clients, good for Doug. And I'm, I'm um, really happy that he likes both of these horses training down so far. Aki Svenstead said that uh, Knockdown dra Dragout trained great on the 6th. I haven't heard back from him since I got back, but uh, really liked her. It's very interesting. I want to I wanna really see how they train the filly down. From my naked eye, it looks like she's got a lot of heavy lifting in front of her. But I'm very interested and intrigued with the way he trains his horses. Very, very cool uh, the way that they do it. Uh, and then obviously Brave World, I would suspect, to start back jogging. I, 
I would say the first or middle part of February, at the end of the latest, he'll be back ready to go, I would suspect. So that's all the little barns, the smaller barns. We get Jason, Harry, Kevin, and uh, Mario. Be back in just a minute.